Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will learn about latency. Latency can be simply defined as a measure of how quickly the data can be transferred between the client and server. In order to better understand this, let's take an example of Amazon app. Let's say that we are using the Amazon app and let's take a scenario where you see an item and you want to add that item to your cart. So there will be a button uh, which will add the item to your cart. How does this function? The first thing you need to do is you have to click add to cart button. When you click the button, the request is actually sent to the server. So as you click the button in your mobile or in your PC, the mobile or PC will be the client which will be sending the request to the server. Now when the request is received by the server, the server will process it that the server will add that item to your cart and then the server will respond with an acknowledgement that the item has been successfully added and so when you receive the acknowledgement from the server uh, then it will show in your PC or mobile that the item has been successfully added. In this entire process of when you actually click add to cart button and uh, the time at which the item is actually added to your cart, this time gap can be said to be the latency. So this time gap was actually taken to process your request. First of all, the request was sent to the server and let's assume it is 200 ms and uh, 50 additional ms to process your request at the server and 150 ms to uh, transmit the request from the server to the client. So the entire time span was 200 plus 50 plus 150 which was equals to 400 ms. So the time gap once you clicked the button and once the item get added in your card actually is 400 ms and hence you can say that the latency to add item to the cart was 400 ms in this scenario. Ideally you would want that as soon as you click the button your item gets added. But in real life case uh, some time is actually taken in between. And so lower the latency, better is the performance. So you can say that the latency is inversely proportional to the performance. That if your latency is low, then the performance will be considered to be better. Let us now understand another scenario. Let's assume that uh, our client is in New Delhi and you want to connect to a server in New York. You are sending a request to a website and then the website will have to reply with your request. You can assume the same example of adding an item on any e-commerce website or even Amazon app which gets connected to the New York server. So this is your client and this is your server. Now when the client is actually sending the request, it simply doesn't just go directly to the server but in between it will be flowing through multiple routers and once the request goes from your PC to the router and one router to another router these are all independent hops which the packets are actually taking so whenever you make a request the packets are actually transmitted over the physical wire so the time of transmission is given as tt here now once the packet has been transmitted on the physical wire there will be some distance to reach to the nearest router and let's assume this distance to be d now at whatever velocity your packets are actually going if you are using a fiber optic cable then it may be the speed of light or if it is just the copper wire then it can be the speed of electricity which is significantly lower than the speed of light so in that case you have to just divide by the velocity at which it flows and this entire time is let's call it tp which is the propagation delay so tt was the transmission delay tp is the propagation delay now once your packet or your request actually reaches a router, the router may be busy or it may be free. If the router is busy, the router actually maintains a queue where the request comes from one end and the request is taken out from the other end to be processed by the router. So if the router is busy, then your request will be in the queue and this queue uh, works as first come first serve, right FCFS. So there may be some waiting time which is involved here at the router and this time is known as the router waiting time that is the waiting time in the queue at the router TQR. Now once the waiting time is over this may be 0 or greater than 0. Now once the waiting is over then your request is taken out by the router and then the router will process your request it will use its routing table and we'll find it out which way to send your packets like which interface should be used and where to send it for the next hop. So that calculation will take up some time and let's call it the TPR 
that is the processing time at the router. So till now we have seen four types of time TT which is the transmission time of transmitting a packet on the physical wire. Then you have uh, TP which is actually the propagation time over a distance D. Then there is TQR which is uh, how much time your packet actually waits in Q at, at the router. And then TPR that is the processing time at the router. So all these times will be involved for every hop. Like if a packet was transmitted from the PC to the physical wire here, it will again be transmitted from the router to the physical wire at every hop. Okay. So this is done at every hop. So since it occurs at all the hops, you can simply multiply it with the number of hops to calculate the total time taken, including all these four types of time. Okay. Now, once you understand this and your packet is actually reaching the server, it will involve some kind of processing time and let's call it the server processing time. So TPS processing time at server that will be added to your overall time as well. Right. And now once your packet has been reaching, your request has reached from the client to the server, there will be a response from the server to the client as well. So in this entire forward and backward movement, there is only one time uh, processing of your request at the server. But you will see that if we assume the exact same path, then your packet has been moving like this in the forward direction. And again, it will be moving in the backward direction. So the number of hops will be multiplied by two again, right? So this entire time will be multiplied by two n and uh, you will have the server processing time as TPS. We already know that latency is defined as once you made the request and once the request has been served, the time gap between is the latency. So you can simply say it is TT plus TQR plus TPR plus TP and take it multiplied with the number of hops. It is n but your packet is moving forward and backward in the same path that is what we assumed so multiply it with two times and then it is also getting processed at the server which is tps right so this is the mathematical term in which you can define latency and i hope you got it now there are several factors which will affect your latency you can see that if the number of hops are less first of all then actually your uh, propagation time will decrease all your time will decrease right it depends on if you can decrease this n value let's say there was an alternate path here which goes through london simply and uh, this is the london router now if the packet would have been transmitted from delhi to london and then to new york then instead of making the two hops from delhi to berlin and then to dublin and then new york you are actually saving on one hop so your TQR and TPR is saved one time. Your N value will decrease by one and hence the latency should decrease. It is expected to decrease, right? This is one of the uh, way to decrease uh, the processing time and the queuing delay at the router and also to decrease the propagation time. Now the second thing is if you can reduce the distance, then the overall propagation time will reduce. Then the third thing can be if you use better quality wires like if you are using copper wires for propagation versus if you are using the fiber optic cables so as you must be knowing that fiber optic cables will be much faster as compared to the copper wires so that will actually have less latency if you use fiber optic cables so simply put if your quality of cables are good your propagation time will be less then the number of hops will decrease the queuing and the processing time at the routers because you will be seeing less number of routers then the third point is the congestion in a network if you have more congestion in a network if if the router is seeing more traffic then the waiting time at the router that is the queuing time will be more and hence uh, the overall time will increase hence the latency will also increase right the quality of hardware devices which you use at the server may also affect the latency because the server has to process your request so think about using a normal rotating hard disk as compared to an ssd simply if your data needs to be fetched from the hard disk to be processed then the ssd will be faster and hence this will reduce the overall latency the nature of processing at the server can also uh, define what will be the server processing time. In some applications, you may just uh, send the acknowledgement as soon as you receive the request and side by side parallelly or asynchronously, you can actually send the request to be served. While in some other applications, you cannot send back the acknowledgement unless you have processed it. So if this uh, entire processing has to be synchronous, then the server processing time will be higher 
if it will be asynchronous then it will be lower simply right so the nature in which uh, your processing has to be done will also affect latency so this was all about latency and i hope you were able to understand this i would like to announce about our live training programs data structures and algorithms which is interview dose and system design which is design dose if you are looking for making a switch from service to product based or even make a product based to product based top tier switch and aiming for your dream company this is the best curriculum you can ever join i'll be your mentor throughout the cohort and i will help you clear all your doubts in the one on one sessions you can know more about this by querying us on the whatsapp number or you can also visit our website techdose.co.in please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more such videos see you guys in the next video thank you